Hey there, gang. It is time for another comic book unboxing video. I have here a short box of comic books that I need to grade so that they can be sold on eBay. But here's the thing. I'm not the guy who put these books in this box. I have no idea what we're about to see. So not just a surprise for you, it'll be a surprise for me. So if you like comic books, stick around. We're going to have some fun. Hey there, Bobby. Welcome to Shanghala. My name is Duke, and this is an unboxing video. And so this is another box of books that have been picked from inventory. So if this is your first time here, I work for a company that buys and sells comic books online. We buy at a site called sellmycomicbooks.com, and we sell at a site called dotcomcomics.com. We also have a retail store in Freeport, Maine, and we sell some books on a site called comiclink.com. But most of our books go on eBay, either in multi-book lots or as what we call raw singles. And I'm the guy who grades those raw singles. But these books here have been picked from inventory. These are books that have come in from collections that we purchased all over the world, and they've been set aside to go into multi-book lots. But some of those boxes, because... <laughs> We just have so much. Uh, some of those boxes have been sitting there for a couple of years, two, three, four years, waiting for us to get to them as you know, we process other things, singles and CGC books and operate the store and do other things. And we can only work through the multi-books so fast. Well, the market's changed recently, and so we decided to go through some of those uh, books that have been set aside for multi-book lots and see if there was anything in there that we now think could be a raw single. And a raw single, that's a book that we will we would like to get at least 10 bucks for on eBay. We think that book will go for at least 10 bucks. So that's what we're going to be looking at, and I have the power. I have been given the power, <laughs> which I, I promise not to abuse, but one of the co-owners, the one who uh, went through inventory and picked these things out, he told me, hey, if there's anything in here that you don't think is going to bring at least 10 bucks, go ahead, reject it, throw it back into the multi-book lot stuff. So I, I get to overrule the boss. <laughs> <laughs> I get to tell the boss, no. <laughs> so, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully there'll be a lot of crap in this box. No, no, no. I'm just kidding. I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure he did a fine job. And, uh, and so let's take a look. Let's see. And you, you as you're watching, kind of keep track uh, at home. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Do you see anything you think I should have picked out? Is there anything that I did pick out that you're like, oh no, buddy, you're going to get at least 10 bucks for that. I'm, I'm sure of it. So anyway, please do like, share, subscribe, comment away, do all the groovy things, and let's not waste any time. Let us jump right into this box. And right away, this one, this is a tough one. Right away, uh, Toxic Avenger number one. This was a dollar book not that long ago. It probably still, still might not get 10 bucks. It might be like a $5 book, but I, I think I'm going to let it pass through just because I think it should get 10 bucks. It's a, you know, it's not like it's rare or anything. It's pretty plentiful, but I think there's enough nostalgia for this movie now that uh, this, this could do reasonably well. You know, if, if we were smart, <laughs> Of course, this would, have, this would have taken, you know, some, some advanced pre-planning, but Mego has, you see I've got my Robin action figure here. Mego has recently come out with a, um, I'm not wearing my, my Legion flight ring. Wait a second. Now I have to stop production here and find that damn thing. Uh, give me a second. Okay, there we go. Oh, I realized, oh my God, I'm naked. <laughs> But anyway, as I was saying, uh, Mego has recently released a Toxic Avenger action figure. So what would be cool is if we could make a lot, you know, with the action figure and and this comic book. And I think, I can't remember, I think this was a limited series. I can't remember if this was ongoing or limited. But anyway, uh, buy this book, go out, get the action figure, you'll have a good time. And there's two of them, so that's good. Here's number two. Mutant Monsters, and well, uh, that's that's it for that. Uh, this is a popular issue. Uh, this uh, this one of Wolverine number eight with the Gray Hulk, who was big at that time. The Deadly Foes of Spider-Man. This one I am going to pull out because this is uh, it's a number one, but uh, it doesn't go for anything. I put up the complete uh, limited series as a multi-book lot, and it's got like five bucks. Um, and even uh, I put it up as a fixed price item and it just hasn't sold. 
Punisher number two. Uh, this series really, number one is the only thing that really sells for anything. The rest of it, pretty much, uh, you know. But still, I'll, I'll put that one through. We'll see what it does. Punisher War Journal number one. That's another one that really doesn't do all that much. But uh, eh, we'll put it through. New Warriors. Uh, I don't think this will get ten bucks. But again, I'm going to put it through. <laughs> not that I'm not that I'm afraid to tell the boss no, but you know it's worth you know just testing some things, and there are some things that you know, you feel like well you know they should get at least ten bucks. I mean this book, what was this ninety two? I mean this is a thirty year old comic book for gosh sakes, and the New Warriors was hot 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 for a while, and at, at any moment that uh, one or more of these characters appears in the MCU, this thing will go through the roof again. So we'll put that through. This one, though, this is another one that, uh, like the Toxic Avenger, is kind of touch and go. This could be, it's Ghost Rider number one, volume, was it two or three? I don't know. But uh, uh, that's going to be close to get to ten bucks. Now, these, these are easy ones right here. Silver Age stuff, of course. This is stuff that probably shouldn't have gone uh, into the multi-book lots at all. These probably should have been should have been um, singles right away. This is the pff, second or third uh, Superman Flash race. Uh, DC's uh, philosophy then, as now, was if a little is good, more is better. <laughs> so <laughs> the first Superman Flash race did so well, they, they kept right on doing it. This book definitely should have been a single uh, initially. Spider-Man sells well all day long. It's got a little bit of water damage down here at the bottom. Um, you can see some uh, a water stain. And this this wrinkling. Now, I used to, in my descriptions... Because uh, we like to list in the description of the uh, eBay listing anything that's not immediately evident in the scan. We don't just do pictures. We do high-resolution scans, and we list anything that might not immediately be evident in that scan, such as, you know, water damage, water staining. Because it's a little light. If you're just looking at the picture quick, you might miss it. I say picture, but again, scan. But here is something. CGC has begun referring to this, this wrinkling here uh, from moisture damage. Um, calling it cockling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's the word. It sounds like a tiny cock, but no, cockling is what that is. And I, I had to look it up. That wasn't a word I was familiar with, but that's exactly what it means. It means you kind of wrinkling, puckering from moisture. Uh, so uh, I just love that word. I use that word all the time now. So if you, uh, if you go to bid on this book and you look at the description, it will indeed say that there is some Spider Cockling on that book. <laughs> uh, this one's popular with the uh, Iceman cameo. He's another, see, I told you, another Flash Superman race. Can't get enough of that. The Spectre, ooh, number one. That should do quite well. It's not high grade, you know, it's mid grade anyway, but there you go. Here's another one. It's got 24 bucks on it, and this was a book that was, you know, kind of hot for a while. It's It's come way back down, and I really doubt that it's going to get uh, get ten bucks, but we'll see. This is interesting. This is uh, Fantico's Chronicles. This was a kind of a fanzine um, of the uh, of the era, uh, and this uh, this this one here is dedicated to the history of Spider Man. So I don't know. See, now this is something that probably won't sell for ten bucks, but I'll put it through anyway. Just to promote the idea that, you know, if you go to you know, the seller.com comics on eBay, you're always going to see weird and interesting and different kind of things. You know, so this is something you don't see every day. I have no idea what the print run was on this, but, you know, not super high. And it probably wasn't saved or preserved, you know, the way comic books are. Um, so I, yeah, I don't know that it's rare or anything like that. But again, it's not something you see every day. So it's it's kind of cool to put up just so, you know, just to keep people coming back to look at your listings to see what you've got, because you've always got something different. Um, so there you go. Avengers number 112, that's a good book. Here's Punisher number one, the first of the uh, regular ongoing series. And as I said earlier, that one does pretty well. That's probably a $15, $20 book. This one, though, mm, again, this is kind of that same... That same theory with that Fantago fanzine, this probably isn't going to be a $10 book. It's maybe not even going to be a $5 book. Here, it's probably not much different than a tag that was put on it initially by whoever, you know, we bought this from. But uh, again, do I put it up just so people can see different things? 
uh, even though if I know it's gonna, you know, sell for less than ten bucks. Because the reason, the reason we try and get at least ten bucks is we've kind of figured that with, you know, the cost of acquiring collections, the labor costs um, of our uh, all of our employees, we have five and a half full time employees on top of the two uh, co owners, light, heat, insurance, rent, all that kind of stuff. We, we've kind of figured out that anytime we sell a book for less than seven bucks, we're kind of losing money on the processing cost. So, you know, would it, it might be better just to not bother processing this and throw it right in a dollar box. Um, or if I had a whole run of them, maybe I could put it up as a fixed price item. So that one I'm not, I, I, I might put that one through anyway. Just because, you know, you don't see a lot of Comico books. And that, that was a pretty decent series. I don't know. I think I'm going to put it through. Thundercats, though, that's a, that's a good book. That'll do well. That's very popular. That, that will do quite well. Sleepwalker, though, number one. Oh, especially where we've got two of them. Yeah. I think what I'll do is I might put through the um, I might put through the one that's in better condition, and the other one I'll throw into lots. I might make a lot of like, you know, Marvel first issues, or something like that. Simplify. Uh, it's a nice little uh, series, but um, it's definitely not popular. I, I put up uh, put this up as a fixed price, and it wouldn't sell. And uh, one of the other guys that uh, put up, I saw a lot that he did recently. It was the first two issues of this, and they went for 99 cents as an auction lot. So I'm not going to put that through. This, though, that's a good book. It says $3 on it, but nope. <laughs> that's, that's probably going to be a, oh, I don't know. A, uh, and it's a newsstand copy on top of that. So this era... The newsstand was uh, really a, a very minor part of the print run. By the 90s, only about maybe 10 or 15% of the print run were these newsstand copies. And there's no difference between the newsstand and the direct sales copy other than, you know, lack of a UPC code in the direct sales. Sometimes the, the pricing box is a little different. But still, it's just knowing, you know, where it came from and the channel it went through. And that, again, only about maybe 10 or 15% of the run has this UPC code. So that'll, that'll do well. That is the Volume 2 uh, series by John Byrne, Sensational She-Hulk. The original run was Savage She-Hulk. Uh, that's quite popular. That, that'll probably get, you know, 30, 40 bucks. This is an interesting book. It's a one-shot. This was a direct sales uh, from the early 80s when something that was direct sales only was kind of a big deal. And this is written by Stan Lee, maybe one of the last uh, things that he you know, really wrote before he uh, retired completely. He, he was actually retired from writing actively already at this point, other than just the Spider-Man comic strip. But um, he came back occasionally to do an odd thing here and there. And so this is something he did with John Byrne on the art. And that was just a special for uh, the direct sales market, kind of testing how well something would do if it went only direct sales. This one I'm going to pull out. This is the uh, the rebirth of Jean Grey, her uh, revival from the dead, or maybe it's a should say her first revival from the dead. Uh, <laughs> and John Byrne, of course, uh, he was always against being forced to kill Jean Grey initially. Uh, initially, they were going to let her live, but Jim Shooter, the editor-in-chief, was like, you know, a couple issues ago, you had her wipe out as Dark Phoenix, wipe out a planet of six billion inhabitants. <laughs> It's you know it's not something that really can go unpunished. You know, granted, it's kind of a Victorian notion of justice: the guilty shall be punished. But even so, uh, Shooter was like, "Yeah, you got to do something about that." And Chris Claremont, the writer, was got kind of frustrated and you know couldn't figure out how to write himself out of that hole. And he's like, "Well, we'll just kill her then." <laughs> he was shocked shitless when Jim Shooter just went, "Okay." <laughs> So neither Claremont nor John Byrne wanted to kill uh, Jean Grey. That was kind of uh, foisted upon them by Shooter. And so at this uh, opportunity, John Byrne took the, uh, once Shooter was gone, took the chance to uh, bring her back from the dead. Anyway, long story short, uh, this was a pretty popular book for a while. Uh, but it's, for the past six months, a year or so, this really hasn't brought more than five or six bucks, so I know it's not going to get to ten bucks. Better to just put it in a lot of Fantastic Four books of, you know, near consecutive issues, um, and it'll help boost those books a little bit. So we're pulling that one out. This one, 
probably not a $10 book, but how often do you see rock and roll comics, Guns N' Roses? And it's hard to think. Well, it's easy to think, but it's hard to believe <laughs> that, that Guns N' Roses is 30, 35 years ago. Oh, my God. Yep. Yepity yep. That'll be fun to see how it does. Uh, the Nam. This one doesn't do that well either, uh, frankly. But uh, that one I'll put through just because it was a longer run. I think it was like went like 60 or 70 issues uh, by Larry Hama. And um, yeah, we'll try that. We'll try that. I don't think it's going to reach 10 bucks, but I think it's worth putting up as a single. Because it could. You know, every now and again, you know, you get a couple people uh, competing over it. And it could go up. So we'll see. It sort of depends on who's bidding that day. Uh, Avengers 195. This is a good book. This is the first appearance of the Taskmaster uh, in a cameo. He appears kind of like in the last few panels or something like that. Uh, his first full appearance is the next issue, number 196. But he is actually he is actually in this one. That's his his real live, honest to goodness first appearance. Probably ought to pick up the pace. This has taken me a while. Uh, Avengers number 99, that's a good book. A nice grade, too. That should have been a single to begin with. That never should have gone into inventory. Same with this one. Issue 100. Nice. It's a uh, popular cover, iconic cover. Uh, I don't think it's a really a great cover myself. I think there are kind of different, better angles they could have got to get that. It looks a little weird to me. But ever since that scene appeared in the movies, that's been a, a big, big thing. Uh, this one I don't expect to do all that well. Uh, this is one of those semi-regular changing of the guard roster change issues. And, uh, you know, I can't even remember who, who got the pick this time. Probably Hawkeye again. <laughs> Pretty sure Rom was never an Avenger. Invisible Girl, that's cute. I don't know. Here's a nice uh, Paul Smith cover on X-Men, number 166. 164, first appearance of Carol Danvers as Binary. Spider-Man 200, that's nice. That's a nice book. I remember reading that one when I was a kid. Here's the first appearance of Puma, number 256. Uh, Captain Marvel, what does she do here? Does she join the Avengers? She becomes leader of the Avengers? I'm not sure. Occasionally I'll see this listed as her first appearance, and of course it's not. Her first appearance is in, um, oh, what's he futz it there? Uh, Amazing Spider-Man Annual 16. This one... Uh, is this the one with the tattoos? No, it's not. That's 238, I think, has the tattoos that you always have to check and make sure it's there. But this is 239. It's not a very high grade, but Spider-Man you do pretty good with regardless. This is nice. Not super high grade, but this should still do well. House of Mystery 208. Amazing Spider-Man 74. Ooh, look at that. Ghost Rider number 3. That's a yes all day long. Number four. Number five. Six. That's nice. Seven against the Daredevil villain, the Stuntmaster. That's kind of a natural pairing there of those two. Look at this. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> number eight. Here's number nine. What does it say? Origin of Ghost Rider. So there you go, the Hellbound Hero. And this is the last issue. This one does well, too. This is the last issue of the original run. So that one does pretty well. And it's a newsstand copy. Uh, Adventure Comics, the Spectre run by uh, it was a Michael Fleischer and Jim Apero. That, uh, that, that does really well. These are, well, this says $450, but it's going to be more closer to probably $40. Bucks. Well, maybe $20. It's got a few tick marks in here, but it's definitely... Definitely a good book. And it's a good run. Uh, if you can ever uh, find these, because the, the Spectre um, offs, you know, he, he uh, doles out his justice <laughs> with a, uh, a fairly grim hand. There's a lot of gruesome things uh, that happen in this series, particularly gruesome for the era. You know, these days you might not, you know, bat an eyelash, but at that time it was like, oh my God. <laughs> You know, it's surprising they got away with it. They didn't get away with it long. This uh, this Spectre series in Adventure Comics only lasted about, oh, I think about 10 issues, maybe. Here's an old Strange Tales with uh, Human Torch and the Thing as the Beatles in some uh, mop-top wigs. That's exciting. 
And look at that, right beside it, the Batman issue that uh, featured the Paul is dead uh, conspiracy theory. Of course, they uh, came up with this uh, doppelganger group that uh, is and is not the Beatles. But of course, you can see that it is John, Paul, George, and Ringo uh, right there. And this sort of mimics the Sgt. Pepper album. I think that's the back cover where Paul's facing away. So that's one of the clues that he's dead. So that's cool. They're not called the Beatles, but it's obviously who it's intended to be. Unfortunately, there's a little stain there, but still cool. Marvel Super Heroes Spring Special Number 1. I'll have to look this up. One of these has uh, kind of an unheralded first appearance of Squirrel Girl. I'm not sure if it's this one. And if it's not, that's likely a book that I'm, I'm going to pull out. Pull out. <laughs> I'm going to pull it out. <laughs> going to throw it into a multi-book lot. Detective Comics 448, that's nice. Always love these 100-page uh, Super Spectaculars. These are fantastic books. Love these. Love, love, love them. They tend to be, you know, kind of lower grade, low to mid-grade, so I can't say that they do great. These will probably be $15 or $20 books on eBay, but still, good stuff. Here's another one in that Spectre series from Adventure Comics. Here's the same one in... Maybe a little better condition, at least with the corner not folded back. What else do we have here? Er, these bags are stuck together. I'm trying to do this without pulling on the books themselves too much. Ah, uh, there we go. And, uh, and again, this is—I'm not sure this is an actual comic bag. This is just a bag. <laughs> uh -huh. But anyway, there's another one. All right, gang, we are going to cut things off right here. Please come back tomorrow, 9 a.m. Eastern Time, when we will finish off this box. I look forward to seeing you then, and until then, goodbye, good luck, and please be good to each other.